and welcome to another Pike and Shot battle. We're back in another match against Nosy Rat. He's here for revenge, and we'll see if he can get it. Uh, this time I have the Parliamentarian, 1642, versus the Cornish Royalist, 1643. And just like before, we are playing a pair of matches, and each of us command each army once. Although, uh, this being Pike and Shot, the terrain will be different, of course. So, the forest will be a good anchor, although the Cornish Royalist list does get good light infantry in the form of pretty good sized units of detached musketeers. We'll want to max out on our pike and shot, and our pike and shot with light guns, and our separately deployed musketeers for the forest. Question is, do I want? I don't think I want commanded shot this time because your unit size is small, and the detached musketeer units that you can bring to bear are 240 men strong and could defeat the commanded shot in melee pretty handily. So we'll save 48 points there at least. We'll max out on raw pike and shot, leaving 96 points to work with. Gonna get dragoons. They have their uses. Uh, in this case, their use would be to uh, push up the right flank and seize these hedgerows to fight off his cavalry. Could also get artillery, but I don't have a hill to put them on, and it's hard to leave a gap. I think I will grab the dragoons, leaving me with 48 points. Um, I think I'll go a little unorthodox and bring clubmen. Uh, they're pretty terrible, but we'll just put them in the forest to fight his light infantry, and even if they lose, it'll take time for them to lose. Leaving 24 points, so it's either commanded, shot, or light guns, and I might as well get light guns. So the plan is... Mass musketeers and clubmen in the forest or anchoring against it in the rough. A line of pike and shot, dragoons to seize the hedges, maybe some of our terrible shooty parliamentarian horse to help fight in the hedges because the impact horse, the cavaliers, will be neutralized in non open ground. And we'll try to push across and shoot down his infantry before they can get into melee contact. He does have some units of Cornish pikemen that can move three tiles and a fine artillery platform here or here as he chooses. Deployment. Right, so we will deploy in the open with our squishier shooting infantry in the woods. I mean, I suppose the alternative is to deploy out here and then quickly push into the open. I don't know about that, though. We can consider. I'll cut here and then deploy. Right, so here we are. Um, so mostly, well, it's kind of split between defensive and offensive. This is clearly a defensive deployment. Um, these raw pike and shot are just a delaying force. These club men, uh, they're just uh, basically pissed off farmers with farming implements are hiding in the forest with the masked musketeers. And we'll have a solid line, including our best pike and shot with light guns, with a line of reserve foot, reserve horse to either push forward or switch flanks. Dragoons to attempt to get into these hedges, and then a hard right hook to make it a battle of musketry here. We'll see how any of that turns out. All right, let's see his deployment. That's to be expected and should create some difficulties for us. Lots of cavalry. He bought four units. So, that should give us some hope.
quick to the hedges. And the horse as well. Three more units of foot to the right. In the meantime, you two can advance. It's got three units of cavaliers in reserve there. I think we'll shift our own horse to the left and try to arc around. Might be a bit long, but we're not going to make contact yet. So I think we can afford to do that. Next turn. All right, we've made it to cover. More men on the way. This unit's in the open, so it's no secret that we're here. These units might be hidden, but I doubt it. Let him move a little bit closer and then we'll push out with this infantry. Take it slow with our parliamentarian horse. So we'll try to stop up the cavalry advance with infantry here. It might force us to stretch out a little bit, but he invested heavily enough in cavalry that his infantry is pretty short. Next turn. push into this village for a little bit of extra protection. Might actually change my mind about this unit here. Say hello.
Okay. I might actually use this horse to zone of control lock one of these royalist pikemen units. Right. So once these Royalist Musketeers move into contact, we'll begin our counterattack on the left. And we can push forward a little bit in the center as well to pin the rest of his infantry. Next turn. Alright. Into the club, man. They're cheap for a reason, after all. Good. Our numbers should begin to have an effect here. Still want to bring some help. And out with the horsemen. We'll get ready to flank both of these units. In the meantime, we can say hello to that unit. I feel like it's kind of risky to move into a forest facing these Royalist Musketeers. On the other hand, I don't like sitting here not doing anything to think about that. I'm sure that's all very annoying, but it's not particularly damaging. There we go. Get in line. Let's do it. Get this unit in reserve a little bit more out of the way in case bad things happen. There. So we'll keep pushing into the hedges here. Take out these light infantry, keep arcing around with our cavalry, and see what we can do here. Next turn.
All right, so just like in my match as a royalist, knows your eyes going all in for the assault. can accept a charge here. If he does charge, then we can try to move the musketeers around. Well, they're gonna have a bad day. Good. So no control lock these pikemen and disrupt them. Good. Come on. Nope. Looks like they'll make contact. That's too bad. That'll hurt us. 100 impact. 100 melee. have to accept the loss of a cavalry unit to slow the charge of these Cornish pikemen. Trying to decide if this unit should turn to shoot inward or shift to the right. I think shift to the right. I think it's going to get a little bit messy here. Okay. Next turn. So we spent 102 points worth of units to take out 72 points worth of units, which should be worth it once my units return to command. Ugh, messed up the zone of control rules there. Should have moved these up further. So, as I suspected, things will go badly here.
How very confusing. Disruption's a shame. So, unfortunately, I think we'll need this unit to stay here to cover the flank of this unit in case this pursuit ends. Or I could take the risk of that not happening and just move here. I think I'd prefer a short thing here. Right. Well, none of them fragged, so they might have a chance to rally up. Okay, this mistake cost me, but not necessarily the battle. Next turn. Oh, that could be very dangerous. Oh no. Giant hole there, then. Now we're down six. Mostly from that one mistake we made here, although not entirely. Good work from that frag unit of pikemen. Two flank charges.
let's try to auto break this unit. Good. Protect the flank. And protect the flank. Right, this is a disaster. But it's not a lost cause yet. Let's attempt to save this unit here. Very good. Bit of a traffic jam here. We can find a way to wrap up his remaining infantry here. We should be okay. Do you hesitate to just turn and fire because this unit breaks, or when this unit is broken, could spread the panic. But we're going to do so anyway. They're close to auto breaking. So let's encourage their flight. All right, this got much messier than I thought it would. Next turn. Good, we're starting to clean up the infantry. And I don't believe this will be a flank attack. They are frags, so we might break them anyway. Or not. Now they're disrupted, so I don't know if we'll charge in. We're going to lose the remainder of our right wing, but I think we can bear the loss. Surprise, they stood their ground. Okay. We'll start where things are less bad. Ah, they stood their ground. To be honest, I'm not sure if I feel the urge to move, really. Let's get this unit out of the wood. Oh, very nice. If we're lucky, Yes, my cat is celebrating our luck here. Uh, so, in Pike and Shot, 
missile and mixed missile and melee units cannot charge cavalry unless they are pike kales, um, which these units are not. However, non-light melee only infantry can charge cavalry. There are very few such units in the game. Uh, there's early English men-at-arms or Spanish swordsmen and you know probably a couple other ones I'm overlooking but they're quite uncommon but also these clubmen in the English Civil War list they're untrained mob with no capabilities um, their weaponry isn't listed because they're not trained in their use but they have clubs and um, sides on poles and bills and that sort of thing so Manage to catch the Cavaliers by pursuit. Very nice. Hopefully we can get our Musketeers into cover. Although it's starting to look like soon it might not matter. And I'll push this unit past. Okay, good. That pretty much clears the sector of the field, leaving only our quasi-collapse here. But it's not as bad as it looks. So here, it looks like we're just screwed, right? But this hedge protects us from this disrupted cavalry unit. And this hedge corner also protects us from this direction. Um, I'm saying that I'm like 95% sure there's a part of me that doubts, but I'm pretty certain that that's correct. So I can just turn to face this unit and be protected from the cavalry. Uh, I'm going to march away from cohesion check range of that unit collapsing and just stand my ground here safely in the hedges while the rest of the army slowly rallies up. Uh, this unit's doomed. We can't do anything about its collapsing. Hopefully it doesn't infect this unit with panic. Run away for now. All right, let's see what that takes the route percentage to. Right, next turn. Should be just about over, we're up 22. Nosy Rat said he didn't know about the uh, hedges and the effect they had from looking at the map, which um, he said he played about 10 games before this, and that makes sense. Uh, hedges only show up in English Civil War. Uh, random maps and scenarios, and if he's been playing like 30 years war and the like, they won't have turned up. Uh, and this was just a pair of games that I hosted in the um, in the open. It wasn't like a ambush game I hosted for him or anything like that. Oh, surprising. There we go, 28%. And it's over. So this was a Tough map for the Royalists, I think. Um, given that Nozira chose his army, assuming this was open terrain that was going to affect things pretty severely, uh, had he known, he probably would have bought less cavalry and more infantry. Um, that being said, the forest was going to be tough too. He had those uh, Cornish uh, detached musketeers, which are above average, so they're quite good. 
but their unit size is still 250 men, not 500. So even the club men, which have no melee capability and are disordered in the forest, being twice their size could at least hold their own against them. So it's a 12-point unit pinning in melee at 36-point unit. And then at that point, it's easy enough to get more infantry into the fray. And I did max my infantry and try to invest minimally in cavalry, which, um, as you can see from how rapidly any cavalry I had on the front line collapsed, was probably the right call here. Uh, so again, Nosy Rat is pretty much, not quite, but basically brand new to the game. So there's a lot of little things like the effective hedges and stuff that he doesn't know yet. And I want to be clear that he is definitely a better Field of Glory 2 player than me. And if he does end up putting time into Pike and Shot, he will undoubtedly become a better Pike and Shot player than me as well. So, a good game to Nosy Rat. And until next time.